Welcome to Roll for Geekiness, Jay here, and today I am going to start working on my Warhammer 40k Drop Trooper armor. We are going to start with arms and legs, and I'm going to show you how you can template those for yourself. Uh, that'll be this will be a generic technique that you can use not only for drop trooper armor, but pretty much anything that has armor that will cover your arms and legs. So, let's get into it. So the fun thing about armor design is that, well, I would argue, armor design is something that hasn't really changed a lot in over a thousand years. The materials that are used in medieval armor versus modern day armor are obviously very different, but the vital parts of the human body that need to be protected and the way that the armor needs to fit so that the combatant has full range of motion, good protection, good mobility, those things actually haven't changed ever. Um, so we can look at a lot of different armor throughout history, look at how that is designed and how that functions and how that fits. And we can extrapolate that into what we're doing here. So this is actually, I've built a suit of armor in the past, uh, back when I was doing historical recreation. So I'm going to be taking a lot of stuff that I learned then and applying it now. But before we do that, I need to rant for a brief moment, just a brief moment. We are going to be building sci-fi armor based on an illustration out of a book. This is something I think most cosplayers have probably run into at some point if you've ever designed, built, worn armor. If you're basing it off of an illustration, an animation, a 3D digital model, in other words, something that's never existed in the real world or been attached to a real person, you might find that it does, that there's parts that don't really work. Or if you've ever sat there and stared at an illustration and go, what are those straps even doing? How is this all held up? Like gravity is a thing, right? You're not wrong. Um, now I'm not going to say that every artist who is drawing art for game companies or cartoons and animations and video games needs to go out and study armor design, but I would also argue that it's not hard to find real world examples of whatever it is you're trying to depict, or at least something close. You're drawing a D&D &D character who's supposed to be wearing some sort of scale mail armor. Well, there's historical examples of scale mail armor. You can go and take a look and go, how is that designed? How does that fit? And your armor's obviously got to look more like, I don't know, some sort of elven design to it or something maybe, but the functional parts of that armor don't change. I'm about to build a suit of armor for something that supposedly exists in the 41st millennia. Obviously, that's a long time from now. But I'm also building an Imperial Guardsman's armor. The super cheap, super, inex super simple armor that is churned out by the thousands on manufacturing planets uh, for the rank and file troops of the Imperial Guard. The reality is, is a lot of it does not look horribly dissimilar from, insert photo here, modern battle body armor. Right? So it's not hard for someone who's drawing something that's supposed to be futuristic to look at something modern and go, okay, again, how do all of these parts fit? How do all of these parts go together? How does all this need to function? That's just my pet peeve, and I'll end my rant there. Thank you for indulging me. So we're going to build this Warhammer 40k Drop Trooper armor. Let's take a look at it. 
To look at the arms, they're simple. This is just a van brace that covers the forearm. So that's pretty easy. We don't have to worry about covering the elbow. We don't have to worry about any articulation there. Easy. If we look at the legs, we see that that's made out of three completely separate pieces. There's like a shin guard, there's a knee pad, and there's a, a, a cuse, a part that covers the, the thigh there. Um, yeah. You could do it this way. If you want to remain true to the art, like, go right ahead. But I wear knee pads like this when I'm nerfing. And this is similar to what's used by tactical and military forces around the world nowadays. And when you're moving around, this part can flex. These straps, obviously, above and below your knee hold everything in place. But it slides around a little bit. As you're moving around, these can, these can drift down. Gravity is a thing. And all you really have here is some tension in these elastic straps holding them in place. So as the day goes on, you find yourself reaching down, grabbing your knee pad, pulling it back up a little bit. I don't want to do that. So, I think I'm going to simplify this a little bit by incorporating that knee pad into the greaves to do a full piece that covers the knee and the shin. You know, much like the Romans did a few thousand years ago. Again, like I said, very little's changed in armor design. Now, I mean, you could get fancy. You could design something like this. This covers a lower part of your leg, and you've got this nice articulated knee pad, and then this covers your upper leg. Sure. This is, this is what they did in the Middle Ages. It provides really great coverage for the knee and the leg. But that's less of what we see in this image, so we're not going to go that route. And we're not going to deal with all that uh, articulation there. Which... Would be, would be particularly fun to try and do with foam. It's doable, don't get me wrong. And I've seen it done. I've seen some people do that very uh, ingeniously. But again, we're going to go simple. So at the end of the day, we'll be designing a one piece that covers the shin and the knee. We'll be doing another plate that's going to hang over the thigh. And then we'll be doing a van brace that covers the forearm. So, let's get started working on our templates. To do that, the first thing we're going to need is something to use as our template material. If you've got a sheet of brown paper or of uh, newsprint style paper, I hope you know what I mean by that, those are great, nice big sheets of paper if we're going to be working on nice big pieces of armor. Um, I wouldn't recommend newspaper itself. Uh, print or graphics on it can get in the way of you finding where your lines are, and that stuff tends to be pretty flimsy. You'll end up tearing it in the process. Uh, if you've got, like, lightweight cardstock, like an old cereal box, that stuff's great too. But today, to prove it can be done, we're just going to use some 8.5 by 11 scrap paper that we've got sitting around in the studio. I'm sure you've got some too. So, the other thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you are wearing anything that is going to be underneath the armor that you're making because that will help you get the most accurate measurements and fit as you're working. So, since we're working on my drop trooper armor, I am already in my uniform with my pants and my shirt and my boots. And let's get started. All right. <clears throat> Let's start with the arm. We're ultimately going to be making something, you know, not too dissimilar from this. Uh, if you already have made something like that, then you've already figured out all of your measurements. You probably already tweaked that and gotten that to fit just right. Go ahead and feel free to use that as your template um, because you've already done a lot of that groundwork already. But if you haven't, I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. So, here's our paper. 
I don't know how well you can see the white paper against the white bench top, but it's there, trust me. Uh, we're gonna try and cover, let's see, my elbow's there, right? So that's not, we don't want it to go back that far. We we'll probably want it to go to about here. So that'll be good. I we'll want it to come up to about here. So this'll work. But can I wrap this all the way around my arm? I cannot. Now, if the piece of armor you're making doesn't need to wrap all the way around your arm, well, then you're good there too, right? But uh, I think we do want this to be able to close here or come pretty close to closing. Um, let's see, can I get the right measurements? If I oh, align the paper this way. Uh, yeah, I think I can. Now with some of this stuff, if you've got an extra pair of hands, a handy dandy assistant that can help you do some of this, that might make life a little easier. But again, to prove that you can do this stuff yourself, I'm going to. Let's grab this piece of tape. Stick that right down there. Line this up, let's see. I probably want a little bit of my sleeve coming out because you don't want your the foam rubbing right up against your uh, wrist there. And we'll wrap that. And boom. All right. So, the first thing that you'll see, now that I've done that, is that, well, you know, your, your forearm, if it's anything like mine, is probably not just a straight cylinder. There's a bit of a taper here, and so as we wrap paper around it, we end up highlighting that taper by these edges not coming together square, and these edges not coming together at all. So, these are things that we can fix. And we will. Again, now, the thing we want to also do here is get this as tight around our arm as we can. We're going to account for this all later. There we go. That's about how I want that to fit. Yep. All right. I'm doing this on my right arm. I'm a righty. So, bear with me while I try and do stuff with my left hand. Um, let us first... Alright, so, we need to decide how we want the opening on this side to look, right? Do we want... this... to be open? And this to be open. You know, we'll straighten out those lines in a little bit. Yeah, it's probably about right. The other thing we want to do is how far down our arm do we want this to go? Yeah, I don't want all this, so I probably want this to end right about here. And the same thing over here. That registration mark there. That way we know where this these two edges line up. All right, cool. So that is a really, really, really rough template. Or it will be. Let's take it off. Okay, we do know that we wanted to cut from here to here. And from there along here. Remember that your arm is a curve. So, you can do something like that. Yeah? Close? Sure.
Yep, yep, that'll do. Now, why am I leaving a gap back here? You know, uh, I mean, you don't have to. You could make these edges line up if you wanted to be lacing this together, for example. I'm going to be dropping two pieces of nylon strapping in here, and there's going to be some buckles. So I need there to be room for the buckles. Things you need to consider as you're putting together your armor. How do you want it to attach? How do you want it to uh, interface with itself and with everything else that you're wearing? So, in this case, buckles, and so I need to account for that in my design. So I'll end up with those straps going here. And there we go. So. Uh, you'll also note, though, as we put this on, again, this this is a straight line. This should be similar to this line here. Um, so we will end up wanting to cut a little bit of this away. Uh, unclear exactly how much, but this gives us a rough place to start. And as you start building this piece of armor, you'll want to be constantly checking it for fit, cutting away parts that are in your way, um, Etc. Etc. Hmm. Does this fit on my other arm too? Let's make sure. Make sure, it fits the way we expect it to. My arms are pretty symmetrical in size and shape, so that's going to work just fine to make two of these. Um, if we wanted to make sure that this curve actually is symmetrical. Uh, what we would do is just fold this in half, actually. Oh, see, it's not. A little bit extra in there, so we could fix this by cutting that away. In fact, we probably should have just done that to begin with. Let's fold it in half and cut that curve. Now, we made a nice round template for our Vambrace here, but if we look at some of the artwork, some of them have a bit of a more angular profile. There's like a flat plate and then angle that that way, and we could do that, um, especially since we're going to do something similar with our leg armor. Um, it might help to use the same design language throughout. So rather than just having this be a round piece, or sorry, a conical piece, sort of, piece of foam, um, I think we're gonna do something where this piece on the back of the arm will be flat. And then we're gonna want to Put a crease in somewhere around here and here. Haha, -ha. that's a beautiful part of writing the paper. And then the rest will curve back from there. That was about there. That was about there. And again, since we don't, we, we're just, we want these pieces to not meet up anyway because of the buckles that we're using, that'll be fine. Again, like we're, like I was talking about, again, uh, to answer how we're going to get that kind of look is, you know, we're going to have our flat piece of foam here. We'll be able to cut a V into the foam back here glue those edges together, and then everything will kind of have that more pronounced angle there while the rest will curve a little bit. And again, if we really want to make sure that things are symmetrical, we can measure. One and three quarters, yeah, about one and three quarters. Yeah, I got it right the first time. So if we, again, we look at that reference photo, we'll see that the armor starts pretty much right above the inst instep of the boot, 
It does come down a little bit to cover, maybe cover the ankles. Um, and then it cuts up this way. And in those photos, it ends here, because then there's a separate kneecap here, knee piece here. But we're not going to do that. We're going to come all the way up, and then I will do that angled piece here that's going to do like that, and then have some pieces on the side there, and then we'll just do this all as one piece from here to here. Um, fun. Let's see. What do we need to do? We need to put... Starting right about there. Alrighty. Ha ha. I have leg armor now. Alright, but what's the shape of this look like? We know that, well, actually, in the reality, I want to cut out a bit at the top here so that I can actually push this a little lower and get it to come down over the boot. So, um, I'm going to start. Just making a cut here. So that we can push it down. And then I can cut away what we don't need now. Yeah, now the top of this is right about where I'm going to want the top of the knee pad to be. And my shoelaces are in the way. Is it? Do I want that knee pad a little higher even? I might. Let's move this piece up a little bit. First things first, let's remove the material. Okay, now that's cutting down and around. That fits about right. Get back in there. We may end up coming cutting some of that off before we're done, but let's see. Yeah, in fact, I do want to cut off about an inch here, just because that's where the boot itself flexes when you bend. So that's going to be problematic. I'll take off about an inch there. There we go. All done. No, no, not at all. Um, So, so, this piece is going to come up. Uh, let's see. Let's if we look at our reference photos. Hmm. This piece looks like the lower piece looks like it's just curved around the shin. We could do something to this, similar to the thigh plates and the knee pads, though, too, and do this as a flat piece and these as angled pieces. 
I think I kind of like that idea. So, ultimately, this is kind of helping us figure out that we're probably going to want a crease about here and a crease about here. Uh, when we put this on the actual foam, we can still have this be one piece, and we'll cut out like a V on the back side of that so that we can fold it and glue that, glue those two edges together to make this angle. Um, and that'll give it a little bit of rounding at the same time that it makes that defined edge. So, I like that. All right, we want to make a note though of where the knee is going to start. So the knee, Hey. All right, and then we can line up that seam with the point of the knee. All right, so bottom part, bottom of my kneecap is right about here. So the shin pad, so to say. going to end about there ish and we're going to want the knee pad to cover something like that huzzah which ultimately means we will be cutting away this material. Yeah. Because we will build the knee on top of, well, yeah. part of that away, and then use the crease that we made, make sure things are symmetrical. So at the end of the day, That is more or less what our armor will look like. They'll end up being a strap here, another one down here. And the knee will, I want the knee to be bigger, don't I? I do. And that's why we're working with paper and not our final foam form yet. Because I can take this piece that I cut off add some material back on tape it back in place. Do the same on the other side. Yeah, that's a little better. gives us a rough form for our greaves. The last piece of armor is the thigh pad here. Now, again, if we look at those illustrations, it's kind of hard to tell how that's strapped at all. So that's when 
our handy dandy historical uh, examples help us out. If I spin around here you can see the way this is designed is that there's a strap here that hooks this onto my belt and then there's another strap down here that goes around the leg. So that's exactly how we will design this piece too. We'll do a pad here that covers part of the leg. We'll have to be very careful to not make it come up too high or that will be uh, uncomfortable. There'll be a strap that holds it onto the leg here and then there'll be another strap that runs up to the belt. We will template that from the, from the perspective of figuring out how big we want this piece to be. Um, it's going to just be, it, it's just a big square. There's nothing interesting about the shape or design of this piece. Anyway, uh, so let's take a look at the thigh armor again. So this is a plate that just goes on the front of the thigh here. Uh, it does want to come down to about here. But we don't want it to come all the way up to here. That's going to that's not going to work for us. And we probably only want it to come to about here. Uh, I'm going to say right about here. And if it goes to there, yeah, we can cover it out here. But we're going to want a crease right around here and we're going to want the other crease to be about there. So you'll see that that leaves more material protecting about a little bit of the outside of the thigh than the inside. That's fine. And we can get the placement of this just the way we want it by messing around with the length of the strap that we're going to use to connect that to the belt. So at the end of the day, this is really going to be a square that's about 8 inches by 7 inches, at least for me. Your leg size may differ. Since this piece is so geometric, I'm just making some measurements and some lines and some dots about where the creases are going to be. That ultimately we end up with, well, I'm going to cut all this off. We'll just end up with a plate that's going to look something like Some templates. Depending on what material you're going to make your armor out of is going to impact how you use these templates. Uh, if you're making this out of leather, or in this case we're making this, these pieces out of 10 millimeter foam, you need to consider the thickness of the material you're working with. If you wanted that edge on the inside of that your van brace to meet up, Remember that you figured out how to make it match up with a piece of paper, which is really, really thin. If you're trying to make that edge meet up with a piece of leather that's maybe a quarter inch thick, you might need to add a little bit of length so that the outer edges of that leather meet up. In this case, we're going to be using 10 millimeter foam, so you need to definitely add a little bit of length to those edges that you want to meet up. Not to all of the edges. This edge, you know, for example, this edge of our van brace still is up against our wrist. That doesn't change. But if there are parts of the armor that need to close, you need to take into consideration the thickness of your material. So usually just add a little bit to those margins and you'll end up trimming it, figuring out exactly how much you need and trimming out what you don't need. That's the easiest way to make sure you get all of those edges 
to meet up just the way you want to. So now that I've got some templates, pardon me while I go put it all in some foam and actually make some armor. Or maybe the next thing you'll see is templating the body armor and the shoulders or a helmet. Those are all parts that we still need to make for this 40k drop trooper build. See you in the next one.